began back in 1862 in this small office in the south of England. It was here that Charles Darwin first examined an unusual flower that had everyone baffled. An orchid from Madagascar that seemed to defy the laws of nature. This flower hid its nectar at the bottom of a long narrow tube it seemed inconceivable that any insect could ever reach it. But Darwin famously predicted that somewhere in Madagascar there must be a gigantic moth with a tongue 12 inches long. Darwin's peers ridiculed him for his prediction. There are many strange objects locked away in the museum stalls. But this is one of the strangest. It's known as Darwin's Sphinx Moth from Madagascar. Darwin didn't know anything about the moth to start with. He was working on pollination in orchids and he was sent some orchid flowers and among these was this Madagascan star orchid. The orchid had an extraordinarily long tube. Darwin deduced that the only creature in Madagascar that could pollinate this flower was a type of hawk moth. One with a tongue long enough to reach 30 centimeters down to the nectar. He knew of no example of a moth that had a long enough tongue to pollinate this. But he made a prediction that such a moth would one day be found. Darwin's prediction in 1862 was based on the idea that the orchid and the moth must have evolved together and neither could exist without the other. It was only a matter of time before this hypothetical moth would be found. Darwin's cause was taken up by Alfred Russell Wallace. It was so clear to him that it must exist, that he said it was an absolute certainty that if people went to Madagascar, sooner or later they were bound to find this moth. Wallace published a picture of what he thought the moth looked like, a sort of wanted poster for the mystery pollinator. Darwin's moth was eventually found, but not until 1903, 20 years after Darwin's death. The prediction that he made all those years ago has proven eventually to be entirely, completely correct. Thanks to Darwin, the moth was officially named the predicted one. But 150 years later, Phil has rediscovered the famous comet orchid high in a tree. And now he hopes to show that Darwin was right after all. This is what Darwin was all excited about. Look at the size of that nectar. The moth has to have a proboscis that long to insert into there the beginning of the flower, the opening, down this tremendously long nectar spur just to get the reward which is right at the bottom of that. The question is, will the strange flower act as bait to attract the world's most remarkable moth? Up in the tree, he rigs an infrared camera. If the moth appears, it will be in the dead of night. 
but Phil's camera can film in total darkness using infrared light invisible to the moth. There are no guarantees. Only 10% of Madagascar's original rainforest remains. This jungle is so disturbed that from one year to the next, no one can be sure that the moth still exists. After dark, the flower acts like a beacon, releasing a trail of scent through the forest. The infrared light is turned on. The flower in the tree and fill on the ground are bathed in a light visible only to our cameras. Now, all he has to do is wait. And wait. I gotta move this leg. It's dying. But eight hours into his stakeout, mm. 142 years, seven months, and five days after Darwin's prediction, all his efforts are about to pay off. Oh, there it is. It's hovering, it's hovering in front of the orchid. There it is, the tongue, look at the tongue's coming out, man. Amazing, look at that. There it goes, it's trying to find the opening. There it goes, it's in. It's drinking. <laughs> Never thought I'd live to see that. Darwin dared to predict such a bizarre creation could evolve in the jungle. Unreal. Look at that. And it's required a combination of modern technology and a lot of old-fashioned patience to finally reveal the creature in action. 